from now until we get into heaven, we're going to fall short on a day in and doubt basis. We're going to need the blood of Jesus to cover us in the grace of Jesus to reconcile us back to him. This is The Uncomfortable Truth. Hello and welcome back to season five of The Uncomfortable Truth. We've been on a little bit of a hiatus. Season five. Season five. Guys, we're uh, wow. uh, you know, close to, to well, 190 episodes in. This this will be 191, but, but episode one of season five. We spent a lot of time in a room together, uh, whether it be this room or starting out with the humble beginnings in my shop with no AC yes. or mm. heat. Good thing we like each other. Man, that, those are some. We had to. You had to really want it then, huh? All through, all through, through COVID too. Yeah, we we were less than six foot apart, and and we probably didn't separate our mics very well and used each other's mics probably, on different episodes. Not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sean's got some kind of uncomfortable thing that's happened to him that he he would like to share with you. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> last night we were at a volleyball game, and you know how like. You, you start getting like uh, in flow state in a volleyball game and you're all into the game and you're yeah. watching the game. And anyway, um, and then like, so one of the kids messes up and you're like, gosh, dang, like, what are they thinking? You know? Yeah. And, oh, yeah. and, and, and know anyway, it, it, it's <laughs> been, it was my kid last night. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hey, and, and I will rip my own kid. No problem. Right. Like I have no problem. Like, London, you know, yeah. like, like, what are you doing? Yeah, Pay yeah, attention. Exactly. And uh, anyway, and, you know, me and my wife are just like, what the heck, you know, like, what is the setter thinking of? Mm-hmm. And all this other stuff. And uh, anyway, and then like, Kat taps me on the knee and the setter's parents are sitting like, oh man, 24 <laughs> inches from us. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, just put my head down. I'm like, oh. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> man, our setter's dad, uh, different teams, uh, by the way, our setter's dad sat behind us yeah. a couple games ago Yeah, and she's incredible. Mm-hmm. She is such a good volleyball player, reads the court, understands the game. She's a, uh, she's a court general mm-hmm. and, but her dad is really tough on her. <laughs> and several times Courtney would turn around and, and be like, Okay, listen, that wasn't her fault that time. <laughs> like, don't yell at her. Like, yeah. she's okay. She's doing great. So you all, you always got the parents up there, they're like, change your attitude talking to their own kids, yeah. you know? And yeah. everybody keeps looking up there at that parent. <laughs> That's the one thing uh, uh that we were at a uh, conference deal, uh with Dan Orlovsky yeah. came in and did a speaking engagement recently, uh, that your company, y'all's company sponsored. And one of the things that he said is like, don't Basically, don't be that idiot coach who's like, your attitude sucks. I don't know what you're doing out here. You're terrible. You know, it's like, you need to change your attitude. It's like, oh, what, do, what do we do as coaches when we do that? Yeah. Uh, it's like, they're just well, mimicking us. And and what are we doing as parents? Uh, yeah. And, 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 I've never yelled at my kids. <laughs> I had to learn. I had to learn the yeah, hard right. <laughs> I had to learn. I had to learn how to get past that. The uh, through maturity and and yeah. through you know because you you're a competitive individual and yeah. and it's not because you it's not because you you're a, a terrible parent or you want your kid to be the best player on the floor. It's because you want to compete. You right. know you you want to you want to be. You want to be out there just as much as they are. You want them to show <laughs> the same fire that you have in your belly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which, the, the problem is, yeah. is like as we get older, we become l- less athletic and more competitive. <laughs> yeah. So true. the things I remember, I was sitting at a volleyball tournament. And by the way, if you haven't been to a volleyball tournament where they're playing 10, 15, maybe 100 games in one gym, that mm-hmm. literally does happen. It will test your mental fortitude just uh-huh. by all the whistles. But we were playing in this tournament and we get to the championship game and there's like this 30 minute break that we're waiting on another team to finish been watching volleyball all day me and a couple other parents and all the gyms are open i mean all the courts are open now and so i like let's go over here and serve and see if we can set and spike and all that stuff and i did it for about 15 minutes i was like man that's a lot harder than i thought it was (laughs) (laughs) i'm really bad at this yeah you don't you don't recognize uh just how your body our bodies change until you hop into Mm. a quick 
a quick something you think you could have done mm-hmm. any time at any place, you know, 15 years ago. And you could have. Yeah, that's right. And, and now you can. But now it's a little <laughs> bit different. Yeah. A bit different. Obi's got a, a word for us today, Sean. Will you open us up? Yes, sir. Uh, Father God, just uh, thank you for uh, bringing us back together. And just, um, Lord, just help us to make a difference for your kingdom. Help us to um, to shine shine your light, Lord, and uh, in, into the lives of others, and just uh, to say something, Lord, that's going to make an impact and make a difference f- for you, Lord. And uh, God, just um, uh, thank you for uh, th- these men and how they sharpen me, and just uh, uh, help us to also sharpen our audience. And thank you, Lord, for the platform that we have, and uh, just help us to have a wonderful day. And uh, and to, to make a difference for you in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, we're gonna dive right into it. Um, you know, I think this season, our, one of our goals is to. We haven't talked a whole lot about our goals this season, but uh, for me, one is to, um, you know, shorten our episodes a bit, but have some really great content in those uh, shortened episodes. What are you thinking? I'm thinking 15, 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes max. Max twenty. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's try to stick to that. Yeah, because I, I know we always get to talking. We do, and, and and a lot of times that takes up our our content time, and yeah. so, um, you know, and that's okay because sometimes that's just that's just part of the fun, and right? We, and we're here to have fun along with uh, encourage people to, uh, you know, to to follow Christ. But I want to start out with one of the most important Bible verses in the Bible. And one of the, according to the New Testament, one of the greatest commandments in the Bible, um, which is in Matthew, Matthew, let's see here, 22, 36 through 40. It says, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. And the second is love your neighbor as yourself. So those are Jesus's words. Jesus is saying that those are the two most important commandments, the two greatest commandments that that he said. And, um, you know, I want to switch gears on that. And we know that loving the Lord, our God, with all our heart, our soul, and our mind is is the number one most important commandment. But it's not uh, just by happenstance that he says the very next commandment is loving our neighbors as ourself. And so what that means to me <clears throat> and and what love looks like to me um, when it comes to our horizontal love with the people in our lives, with the people that we do life with, with the people on this planet is service and serving people. And so I also want to switch into kind of uh, a, a discussion about the generation that's coming up, uh, not just our kids, the generation that are in their 20s, the generation that are in their early 30s. Um, you know, we were just, we, I, I'm putting myself in this category, I'm 38 years old, so I feel like I was kind of on the the end of this generational change in our mm-hmm. society, so to speak. And the fact of the matter is, is one day, you're going to enter the workforce. You're going to you're you're going to become an adult. You're going to uh, graduate from high school, graduate from college, and you're going to enter the workforce. And in order to move up in a company, and in order to move up in your career, you've got to have the ability to take orders. You've got to have the ability to. Um, be in a inferior role. You have to have the ability to serve other people. I'll add to that, Obi, in your company as well as in your business. Mm-hmm. In your company, 
that vertical <clears throat> integration is directly correlated Huge. to your to your boss. But in your business, there's still that vertical correlation to your, to customers. your customers. That's yeah. exactly, exactly correct. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was just thinking when he was saying that. I love it. I love it that you're exactly right. And because if you're not willing, if you're not capable of doing that, your business will fail. Will suffer or fail? Right. Yeah, right. It will. Well, <clears throat> you could argue that the Bible teaches that our ability to be successful in any realm of business and in any realm of, 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 of employment is through our ability to serve. Mm -hmm. And whether that be serving our employer or serving our clients or whatever it is, we, we ultimately have to find a way to serve. And unfortunately, that is not what our high schools, that's not what our higher education that's not that's what, not the curriculum. It, they're not teaching it. When you say our ability it. to serve, our ability to serve others. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Dictates our success or failure. Right. That's exactly right. And and unfortunately, the idea of serving others or serving in general, because of what is being brain fed and brainwashed into our this generation that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It, it, it makes it very difficult for them to adapt to that mindset mm -hmm. and understand that serving is loving and serving helps you win. Mm -hmm. Serving helps you win. There's a lot of people listening that might think that, oh, I, I work remotely so I don't have to serve. Well, that's not true. Even if you work remotely, you're serving and helping someone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And some um, Someone. Mm -hmm. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. So so <clears throat> our society, the culture that we live in, has adapted <clears throat> and changed this generation in in into a mindset of nurturing their independence and to into nurturing their self esteem. And we remind them that they're special and they're unique and to forget about you know, uh, what their employers value most. They need to do what they're passionate about or what they, uh, or what they think is important. You know, I mean, there's, there's so many things that the culture, again, that we live in now is raising up that is well, just let me ask you a question. imploding our kids. You, you, so our <clears throat> passions, is it not pertinent to to chase after a passion not necessarily all right so let's, so let's get into yeah, this not necessarily i think that the i think that there are very few people that have a unique gift that is going to allow them to be successful in a career field I think that so are we specifically uh, honing in on like eighteen to say twenty eight year olds somewhere between there. I think I think so. I okay. Think, I think eighteen. I think um, I think eighteen to thirty year olds. Yeah. You know, I think eighteen to thirty year olds um, have this mindset of you know promotion of self esteem of thinking that they know everything of thinking that they're entitled to something of thinking that their opinion actually is is of paramount mm. over their employer or mm. or any or, other or, people or, around or, them that have more experience that's right that's and right. whatever they're doing you yeah know, they 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 don't have the mindset of grabbing a mentor so grabbing somebody that that can help pull them along or pull them up or help them to be wiser, smarter, better servants, you know, I got, all, all of these things. I got a message yesterday on Instagram from a girl who goes to a local college, never met this girl in my life. She said, I see that you guys are on social media and that you'll have Airbnbs. This is a shortened version. I'm going to be doing that after I get out of college to some degree. Is there any value that I can provide you in anything that you're doing in your business? I was like, Phew. yeah, we can figure something out. Yeah. I had, I had, a, I, on that same note, I had a girl reach out to me that's going to Panola college that says that she 
uh, knows exactly what she wants to do when she gets out of college. She wants to get into equine and animal livestock type insurance, crop insurance, agribusiness type insurance. So insurance specific. Very okay. niche. Very niche market. Yeah. And she's like, I'm from Georgia. I rodeo here at Panola. And um, is there any chance that I could come in and have a discussion with you? If you have any part time or interim work, uh, I'd love to be a part of it. I'm not looking for anything other than education. That gives me chills, man, because it <laughs> doesn't happen yeah, that much. Yeah, how many kids out there? She's 19. Thinking on that yeah. level. She's 19. And yeah. I I talked to her last Thursday and <clears throat> told her that Tuesday or, or, or Thursday this week would be a good time to swing by and visit. Yeah. She texted me yesterday morning and said, is it still okay if I come out this afternoon? Confirming. Yeah. Okay. You got a winner there, I would like most likely. Know, I, I would really like to know uh, about her parents. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you can immediately, if you have a kid that's that disciplined and driven and methodical and just on top of their yeah. game like that. It's either their parents or somebody else that's important you, in their they, life. They had, they had a mentor invested. in their life. Yeah. yeah, they had a mentor in their life. It's not always mom and dad. Right. But, yeah. Um, well, my, I mean, you can see it's pretty unanimous in, in the room, in the podcast studio, that whenever we run into someone like this <clears> young <throat> these young ladies – it's such a breath of fresh air mm -hmm. because we deal with so many, and let's not lie, hundreds of men, young men and young women that think that they should just be handed this I Want title. something handed to them, yeah. They want this six-figure career for not having to do anything. Oh, I've got this associate's degree or I've got this bachelor's degree. Why would I need anything else? Or it's this idea in their head that they're they're qualified or better at something, or or they're qual qualified to do this better than other people without any kind of experience. Yeah. Yeah. Not not everybody gets handed uh you know uh, the things that we did whenever we were eighteen years old, right? <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> what funny. were you handed? It, it's funny. Truck keys that yeah, said you, I was you can pay for this truck. I was handed, you can... I, I was handed my truck note, my yeah. college bills, <laughs> and we didn't uh, have cell phones, so you didn't have a cell phone bill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and son, this is how you change a tire. That's right. And yeah. uh, good luck. Well, you know, our parents still supported us yeah. when we really needed them, but they uh, didn't handicap us by handing us I, everything. I think it's interesting because people just assume, right? Uh, a lot of perception is people's reality. And uh, I'll never forget that comment I saw the other day on uh, uh, underneath one of our short uh, posts on this mm -hmm. podcast. Yeah. And uh, a, cu um, a customer, <laughs> a listener was talking about how um, – we probably uh, were handed. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to think of exactly how it went. I think it was a hundred thousand dollars yeah. and the keys to a new car when we graduated from high school. What's the perception I, <laughs> that you know? I'm gonna I'm gonna get real real here. I mean, controversy. Four white dudes sitting at a table talking talking about life yeah. assumes assumes people. Some people. Yeah. And I'm not. I'm gonna be nice and not say what I think here. But some people assume that we were just handed things. Mm -hmm. And we weren't. That's right. And it's. I think it's yeah. important to to call that out. That part of the what you're talking about here is allowing concepts to enter our brains as young people. And there's still things that we fight too, right? Mm -hmm. This is not a condemnation type deal. Mm -hmm. This is something that we think about for our generation, for our future generations, and we want to address the concern of. Poss the possibility of like, hey, if we're thinking this certain certain way, we need to check ourselves, mm -hmm. and that's something that we do regularly. That's exactly that's right. right. Yeah, that's exactly right. And 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 just kind of wrapping up this point here, and wrapping up our our first podcast of this new season, the 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 premise of of what we're talking about here is servantry and being subservient and not having a problem taking orders, not having a problem serving someone. Embrace it embrace starting something from the bottom and serving your way up the ladder mm -hmm. and and serving your way into a business where you you serve your customers so well all they want to do is tell other people about you so that you can serve them too and and so the bible teaches this the bible teaches that 
we can serve ourselves into a wonderful life because that's the way that God designed it. He designed us to go out and find a way not to pursue our passion. God didn't design us to just pursue our passion. Yes, he gave us all gifts and we all have a calling. But at the end of the day, if you want to make a difference or if you want to be successful, find a need, find a need that somebody has and go and serve that need and figure out a way to serve it and develop a passion for that because that is going to take you for further and it's going to provide you with much <clears throat> more fulfillment than sitting back and say, Oh, I've got to figure out what my passion mm -hmm. is, what my passion is. 100%. We, all, we all have this, this, a uh, lot these lies told to us that we just need to be doing what we love. We just need to just do what we love and we're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's a lie. I'm not telling you not to do the things that you love. And if you are a gifted person that is just a natural movie star and you're going to Hollywood, mm -hmm. by all means, take it and roll with it. But that is a very, very, very small portion of the world. A very small portion of us have the gift to go be a movie star, okay? Or so, to or they want to really know what we want to do. That's right. At the age of 18, 22, mm -hmm. 24. That's right. There, there is a huge shortage of business, of business professionals out there. And when I say business, I mean every business mm -hmm. and all you got to do is find a need and go serve it yeah that's that's it you find a need and you go be the best servant out there and you're going to have an opportunity to support your family in a way you never dreamed um, um, the money will come yeah it's yeah. going to come it comes because of your service mm -hmm. that's the way that it, god created it that's a fact so yep. i just want to encourage our listeners if you find yourself just wondering why things aren't working out Maybe it's attitude. Maybe it's a mindset or a culture mindset that you haven't been able to get past. And maybe you need to switch gears a little bit and go into just try it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. J just give it a shot. Just tell yourself, you know what? For the next six weeks, I'm not going to do anything but serve everybody around me. I promise you. You want to be fulfilled? Doors start opening. Doors yeah. will open. It's really cool. You'll receive some fulfillment like you've never seen before. Uh, God will just act upon that obedience, and you will be blessed in some way. And and again, continue that, and uh, you know, just continue to nourish that desire to serve everyone because uh, magical things happen yep. because it's the way God designed. It. Great advice. Yeah, that's good stuff. I'll leave you with this. If you're feeling lonely, depressed, isolated, any of those things, anxious, stressed, carve out about two hours and go surf and see how you feel after that. Yeah, that's very true. I love it. All right. Appreciate y'all joining us today. Uh, hit those buttons, like, subscribe. I think we're on uh, TikTok, Facebook, Reels now. Um, you can find us on Apple iTunes, the other podcast platform. So uh, you, YouTube, yeah, uh, YouTube Shorts anywhere uh we're almost on all the all the platforms so uh listen wherever uh go, remember go kick the day in the face and we'll catch you on the next one